Okay, great. Thanks, Arun. I, I wanted to raise a topic with the group that's not called up by name in any of our working groups. But that I think uh, could certainly interface with several of them in achieving the administration's clean energy goals. And that's the topic of commercial fusion energy uh, in contrast to the fission energy that's currently on the grid. We all know of the potential benefits, uh, but we also know that those benefits have been perpetually three decades away. Even recent National Academy studies target timelines 20 to 25 years away from now, which limits the impact that fusion could have on the administration's climate targets. But at the same time, we know recent advances in the science and engineering of fusion, for example, new materials, new AI-based simulation tools as well, put us at a qualitatively different place today than we were even five or 10 years ago. Arun is engaged with some of these entities, so he's familiar with these transformative advances. What is needed today is support from DOE at a scale much larger than current investments. Now, to be sure, we have significant budget allocated to fusion energy sciences, but that's largely committed to ITER and NIF, large, important science activities, no doubt, but neither of which aspires to commercial fusion in this decade. By contrast, there are private initiatives that make a plausible case for doing just that, commercial fusion in this decade, but they can't do it without help. And really, they need more than just help from DOE. They need a partnership with DOE. I think this is an opportune moment for CEAB to support the Secretary's clean energy goals by reimagining how DOE leverages the labs and other resources to support commercial fusion. Perhaps the new Office of Clean Energy uh, Demonstration could also participate in some capacity here. Now, one last anecdote and then I'll shut up. Uh, I'm here in the aerospace department at Caltech. And when I joined the faculty, some of the senior members of our department here in aerospace we're old enough to remember firsthand the sentiments around plans to go to the moon within the decade, uh, per President Kennedy's famous speech. According to one of those colleagues, the sense at the time was one of overwhelming skepticism, and this is by the aerospace experts, for a variety of well-reasoned technical concerns. And yet the country made it a priority and invested the resources needed to make it happen. In 1960s dollars, that investment was almost $30 billion. Today, that's about uh, $250 billion. In contrast, a 1970 study by the US Energy Research and Development Administration estimated that a minimum annual expenditure of around $2 billion would be needed to ever achieve commercial uh, fusion. And we've never come close to that level of support in this country. So if the status quo prevails, I worry that we're ensuring that self fulfilling prophecy and that fusion will always remain beyond the horizon. And that's not the biggest risk, of course. The biggest risk is that another country makes the investment that we don't and that they succeed before we do. That scenario comes with a host of attendant implications for global leadership, for our energy dis diplomacy, et cetera. So I hope this can be a topic of discussion for our group in the near future. Thanks, Arun.